All right, guys, welcome back. JL Scott, Fishing and Eats, over it is doing well. We're talking a little bit about trout. I'm a little bit, uh, gotten a little bit behind on this one. I apologize. Um, I got a few messages last night. Um, but I did update on the Facebook page. Virginia is starting its trout stocking program right now. Um, you can go to the Virginia, uh, V, um, WR, DWR, uh, for Virginia and get an update on that. I'll try and share that also to uh, the Facebook group, JL Scott Fishing. Um, this is Maryland. Okay, Maryland has completed their stocking for the fall. Now, a lot of people always send me messages about, you know, you're a smally guy. Why are you covering, like, trout fishing? Um, because a lot of these trout get introduced into our smally rivers in, our, in a lot of the areas in western Maryland that have um, – smallmouth in the reservoirs, lakes, and such. Um, and they become forage. They just become, it creates a really, really good bite for the smallmouth. So it really ties into that. But it's just also just fishing related to our region, um, things that you'll be out and about, things that you can do with your baits and modifications, especially if you know that your DNR or DWR are stocking trout. Obviously, uh, they become a target of opportunity. Um Obviously, some of the sizes can be just, uh, a lot different, too, as well. Um, but don't think for one second that a lot of these trout aren't getting fed on. Um, and so it's really important to note just kind of like how how that progression goes. Because a lot of people send me messages about smallie, smallie programs. And Maryland has stocked smallmouth bass. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of myths out there we try to dismiss. There's a lot of people even within our own region that, you know, kind of like telegraphed it. Like there's, you know, that. No one's stocking smallmouth bass, and that's just not the case. The Upper Potomac has been stocked um, numerous times. Um, and so, you know, it goes to that level is where are your dollars going? Your dollars are going to stocking. This is why it should be, you should want to be involved in a lot of things related to conservation and related to uh, where your fishing licenses, license dollars go. Um, you know, all the other things that you buy maybe, um, you know, related and the programs. How's that money spent by the state? Well, stocking programs for uh, for bass and trout um, nowadays. Um, back in the day, they used to believe it or not. Back in the day, they used to used to stock catfish a lot. Um, that's changing, so it's important to know like what's going on. Um, and so here's the Maryland trout stocking activities map. You can easily find that. If you have problems finding the link to that, just message me. Uh, JL Scott Fishing and Eats on Facebook, or if you have, uh, if you're one of the Smalley Chasers and you have my phone number, uh, just text me and I will, um, I'll text you the link right away and you can look at it. Now, I will say this caveat to the activities map this is the trout stocking activities map designated by the state to identify to the public where trout are being stocked. That also does, that does not mean, however, that every one of these blue dots that you see on the screen, you are eligible to fish because there are always restrictions in place at different times of the year, okay? We call these closures. So closure zero means there's it's open. There are no closures, okay, um, that you need to concern yourself with. So open fishing, right? Closures, closure one and two are normally in the springtime. So they close, and closure one is the 19th of March to the 25th of March. Or, um, oh, wait, that's closure two. Closure two is the 19th to the 25th. Closure one is the 5th of March to the 25th. And on March 25th, 2024, um, you know, in March, that pretty much opens up, like, the season where there's no closures. So trout is fully, you can go fishing for trout pretty much everywhere. Um, now, there's some areas in Virginia um, as well that will have areas of certain rivers or streams or parks or whatever that may have restrictions, either make potentially no trout fishing or no, no live bait fishing or, or um, what do you, um, art, artificial only or, you know, all, all the different restrictions things you got to make sure that you're aware of. But this is the activities map and just a couple of the ones in the fall, about a dozen or so of these got stocked in the fall, but you can find that out by moving right up to them, okay, and clicking on them, okay? Um, And it tells you, like, Blair's Valley is a popular one. You guys have seen some videos on my YouTube channel from Blair's Valley. 
Okay, so back in October last month, on October 10th, they stocked 500 rainbow trout. That's a little less. That's less than I believe they stocked in Blair's Valley last year, okay, which could be a good indication. That could be a good indication that the, the trout population is sustaining itself, that they didn't need to stock more, but they did stock uh, 500 rainbow, okay? And so you're going you're gonna to find... Uh, and then here's one like really, you know, close to, to Blair's Valley, um, the Licking Creek main stem where they stocked all three of the fingerlings. OK, they trout, they stocked rainbow, they stocked golden and they stocked brown. OK, those are the three species of trout that Maryland stocks um, predominantly throughout the state. OK, is your rainbow trout, your golden trout and your brown trout. OK, but you can easily go on the site, click on these find these predominantly you will find that the fall that the fall stockings um took place in the greater washington area the piedmont section and a lot of that has to do with weather and the water temperature and all of that stuff and then you'll find out west let's click on one out here um 12 last time this was savage reservoir was stocked the last time in december of 2022 Okay, let's click on another one here. Deep Creek Lake, same, December 22. Okay, those are pretty good fisheries that probably don't need um, the stocking resources like others do, in my opinion. So that's kind of understandable. But then you're going to have them. Here we go. Broadford Lake, okay, Western Maryland, stocked in March, okay? All through this part of the state, you're going to find that they're going to be March and April. There's April, 500 rainbow trout. March, New Germany Lake, Pair, uh, uh, Parkview Pond, 500 rainbow and golden on the on March. See, in that part of the state, you're going to find that they're going to stock those in the spring, and in the Piedmont section, they stock them in the fall. Okay? And so, it's just an easy resource that you can use if you're interested in learning where the trout are actually being stocked in Maryland. You can also use the... Uh, um, Virginia DWR information to look at. And I'll keep that updated on the JL Scott fishing page um, of, of Virginia's um, stocking program going forward that literally just started, I think, on the 6th of November. Um, to give you an idea there as well, because they have a pretty, pretty substantial stocking program as well. But that's it. Again, that's the Maryland Trout Stocking Activities, Matt. You can find that if you need the link. Do not hesitate to message me on Messenger at JL Scott Fishing and Eats, um, and I'll give you that link or and the links to all the trout information um, from the department um, if you're interested in that um, and you want to utilize that as another resource if you're planning to go out uh, to any of these lakes to do any of this uh, any fishing whatsoever. Um, you'll kind of have that in the back of your head that you understand that it recently has just been stocking, and that could be a, a definitely potential opportunity to increase. Um, uh, increase the bite, increase the catch rates, all that. If, if indeed, uh, the fish are actually feeding up because they're going to push a lot of that bait fish. Um, a lot of that bait fish, uh, because that's what it becomes, it becomes bait fish. They'll push them back up into the creeks, back up into the arms, back up in the, onto the, into the bank area and start feeding up. If they actually come locate, you know, 500 trout being thrown into, a, being thrown into a certain area, um, for sure. It's kind of crazy when you see that happen, when you come across that um, and you time and you timed it right to where you were there um, right after the stocking. So it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to see. It's also kind of fun to volunteer and to get out and be part of the stocking part, you know, help stocking um, some of these, uh, some of these streams and, and rivers and lakes and such. And to be part of that as a volunteer um, to help out um, with that and to gain a lot of that knowledge, pick people's brains who do this for a living, uh, you know, that no, no trout, no bass, no, um, you know, the other, uh, the other species of these lakes and reservoirs and bi the biologists and all that stuff. So it's always a great. Hey, it's your boy, Troy. Check out this citation number 21 of the year, 20 and three quarter of inches, four pounds, two ounce smallmouth. Man, we've been in a little bit of a slump a few weeks since we got a citation. A lot of 19s, including one today. But check out this 20 
and three quarter inch smallmouth. Beautiful fish. Gonna cut her loose. That's why we bass around.